Hello there everyone and welcome back to TNO. So at the end of the last episode I said we would be progressing just to the next point to get through the, some of the focus tree but before we do that I want to read a couple of the focuses especially these before I do things off screen just so we can get to the last few events and some special events at that. So it's time to speak softly. The Germans and Japanese must be made to understand that America does not hide behind the moat of the Atlantic and the Pacific Oceans. American submarines hide in vast oceans bringing nuclear annihilation to the very doorstep of our enemies. And should the Japanese or Germans sweep the seas clean, they will find American bombers and missiles waiting to strike beyond the range of their precious navies. If they want to reverse the tables and strike first, we will know and beat them to the punch. America can and will win a nuclear war. The sooner Japan and Germany realize that, they realize that the folly of continuing the arms race and come to the table to seek a new accommodation. So there's that focus, and I will do fortify the UFM. Even in the negotiations between the superpowers, America is made stronger by its presence and support of its allies in the OFN. They are partners, not feudal liege, liege lords of German or the colonial kleptocracies of the Japanese, and even if they do not have the seat at the table, they deserve to be consulted and kept informed of where we seek to lead the OFN to the ultimate goal of our nuclear diplomacy, if not peace in our time, then at least peace through strength. Followed with the big, but ready the big stick. Just in case the Germans and the Japanese thought all of our previous military posturing and development was just a dog and pony show, we'll make sure that they, we have a demonstration of the latest and greatest American interventions in hardware. For all the world to see, it would be a cer certain a terrible waste for all of this to actually ever be used, of course, and we're counting on the Germans and Japanese seeing it the same way we do. And seven second detonations. Contingency planning and redundancies must be built into every strategy. What if the enemy overpowers our forward warning stations and Australian Iceland by surprise? America cannot be left defenseless due to its reliance on, on forewarning from distant shores. We will install a final set of early warning radars in Canada and Alaska. If we ever end up dependent on these systems, the window to retaliate will be minuscule, but it will be there. And finally, a fragile peace. America now maintains the means to destroy its enemies a thousand times over to take every nuclear weapon in their arsenal and match it, and then some. The quantitative and qualitative superiority of our atomic arsenal is manifestly clear, and our enemies challenge it at their own peril. With our nuclear superiority as an article of faith amongst the American public, surely we can afford to be magnum magnanimous. Through the strategic arms limitation talks, we hope to convene, convince the superpowers to take a step back from the precipice of oblivion. We do not seek the adultation of Germany and Japan, only that their representatives come to the table as reasonable men to promise the world that the sun will rise tomorrow. Cool. And I will see you back once we have the whole peace event, hopefully, between Germany, J the Japanese, as well as the United States in, in just a little bit. Alright, so here we are. This isn't the final mission, but... I have been in talks with the Japanese and the German forces about nuclear de-armament, in which we have done all the focuses down here at Fragile Peace. But we have liftoff. After lengthy negotiations, both Germany and Japan have agreed to our SLBM proposal. The second and last major treaty to the Buenos Aires talks has been signed today, and we can say with confidence that these talks were concluded successfully. Now, we had the option of choosing Buenos Aires, which we did. We could have chosen Istanbul or somewhere else in the world, which I can't remember. With the conference wrapped up, we can return home proud of our accomplishments. NASA will rejoice from a major, from a major funding boost, and the world will breathe a sigh of relief that they have, have a lot less cause to fear a war between the superpowers. President Glenn returns to America a hero, and the press are already raving about his diplomatic mastery. But there is still much to fear from rising nuclear powers such as Italy and Burgundy. But at least for now, the big three are on a path to peace. Also, it's a great day for the world. We have liftoff. This will slightly reduce the nuclear stockpiles and expenses of the three nations. It should be stated that during this whole thing, like I did off screen basically, just to speed things up much more quickly. But, oh man, look at military spending. Oh my goodness, what happened to my budget? Holy crud. But, okay, so we had so much debt that right now, it we hit the counter in the game files apparently that reduced the debt to literally zero. We had so much debt, we hit zero and we basically restarted. Man, imagine that in real life. But regardless, also during the peace talks, Apparently there was an assassin that struck at President Glenn, but he successfully, President Glenn successfully dodged the bullets and barely got hit, so there was that to deal with, but I will see you right back once we have landed on Mars. My friends, I believe we have done it. The f dream fulfilled. The result of a journey that lasted months would now be concluded in eight minutes. Mission Control was silent where it had been a hub of fervent activity just moments ago. They completed their task. The rest was in the hands of the astronauts. In just eight minutes, the world would know of Ares 4. Would be a tremendous victory or a terrible tragedy. Sometime, the most defining part of a person's life lasts only a few moments. Neil Armstrong, commander of the Ares 4, knew full well 
that these would be the most important moments of his life. Parachutes deployed. David Cross meant to continue to monitor the lander's altitude. Armstrong's hand trembled as he engaged the decisive retro rockets and prepared for final approach. Despite the furious shaking of the cabin, both men took a moment to take in the view. The Melos Chasma had been a quiet beauty to it. A landscape of deep grooves and red sand. We're here, really, aren't we? Cross pose, opposed, not moving his hands an inch from his control panel. We really are. Armstrong affirmed his grip on the joystick and took them in. Neil Armstrong descended from the lander and became the first human to set foot onto a new world. From our earliest days, mankind has looked up and dreamed of, a, of walking amongst the stars. Today, that dream has been fulfilled. After this, the streets had erupted into beautiful chaos. Traffic halted as people crowded the roads. Firework detonations had become near constant. The moon landed, or moon landing had ensured America's spot within the space race. Landing on Mars had reinvigorated the American spirit. The future was finally looking bright. From within NASA's mission control, John Glenn stood. Cheers erupted as the landing was confirmed. Jo Glenn watched the man on Mars smiled and began to cry. President Glenn's mood matched the nation's as he sat behind his desk. Glenn smiled as, as the address started, or started. To the many people of the world, to my fellow Americans today, we've achieved the impossible. One small step for man. Beautiful. Grow a little more unified. The Earth is the cradle of humanity, but man cannot stay in the cradle forever. The journey begins. And I know there's sounds in the backgrounds too but cool the eagles landed we have dared to attempt the impossible now thanks to the terrorist work by nasa and the glenn administration we have done it for the first time in human history a man has stepped upon the surface of another world and returned safely to our soil the nation has effectively shut down with riotous celebrations held across the country and a tape Ticker tape parade held for the crew of Ares 4 in New York City. Calls of congratulations have come from leaders across the world, including everyone from our allies in the OFN to the Prime Minister of Japan. The flight crew has described themselves as the happiest man on the Earth, or on the planet, but the White House staff knows better. The happiest man in the world sits in the Oval Office, half listening to the terse congratulations of the Fuhrer basking in America's greatest triumph of the century. More political power, stability, war support, political power gain, and just stuff. Everything grows a little bit more unified despite the oil crisis that is still gripping the nation. Wow, look at that. 43% of global democracy. That's a lot more than I expected. And do we get an event after this, maybe? Maybe, maybe, maybe not? The eagle has landed. And you know what? Technically, we can still do focuses regarding the Iranian stuff, or is this Saudi Arabia, the New Republic? Eh, it doesn't really matter. Cool, across the burning sands, but I suppose that's going to be it. Like I said earlier in the, in the previous Fade In, Fade Out, yeah, we had so much debt that it reset to zero. I mean, we have one and a half trillion in terms of GDP, but... And I did cut off the Marines. All we have left are the airborne divisions, which is kind of weird. You know what? Screw it. You know what? Let's delete that. See what happens. We have a little more manpower. Military spending is $3.8 because we still have military factories. But I guess that's going to be the campaign. Cut that down. Cut that down. No construction. We sell us at $65 billion. Regardless, this has been one heck of an inter interesting campaign, but my goodness, has it been long. And I can, and we can definitely see where the devs had to cut content and just had to wrap things up before TNL was able to be released. But regardless, regardless of that fact, I hope you enjoyed the RFK run, two terms to Henry Jackson, as well as the RFK to Glenn run. Hopefully in the future, Glenn is going to get maybe a little bit more content or something like that. Just see, th to wrap things up a little bit more succinctly. But regardless, I still enjoyed it. And maybe I'll come back to Glenn someday. I hope so. But like I said, hope you enjoyed it. If you did, consider leaving a like for the entire campaign. Subscribe if you're new. And thank you to everyone who's already liked and subscribed already. Check out my Discord link if you haven't already. And if you have, thank you very much. And I will see you all in another campaign in the future. Thanks for watching, and you have a tremendous, tremendous rest of your day.